Hello to all. Uh, thanks for, for being here. Um, I'm speaking English, but uh, the, our audience is mainly Portuguese, but we promise to speak English. So here we are because we have a distinct guest that, will, that doesn't understand Portuguese and it's uh, our, our guest here to present this uh, platform. So um, here we are. This is a new initiative for Apicaps. Uh, it's our second webinar. Uh, we have uh, almost 200 people uh, participating in this webinar. I hope the, everyone enjoy it and be useful for all our companies and members of Apicaps. Um, this is a new initiative, but we are trying to bring international players to this initiative. We are promoting a series of webinars. Um, pay attention of our news because in a few days we'll bring news for you with new initiatives. Uh, mainly focus on new markets, new platforms for you to put your products. Uh, with these uh, virals, everything is changing in our business. So we have to be ready. And we are just bringing you opportunities and uh, for our members to understand what is the market and try to figure out which are the alternatives they can, they can run uh, and they can be useful for their business. Um, this webinar is a partnership with ISEP. It's, it was planned to be a, a regular conference to present several studies that Apicaps have made in partnership with us in several of our companies. So this presentation of We Want Shoes, it was an example of a platform that was identified by ISEP in several diagnoses that have been made in our companies. And ISEP has concluded that We Want Shoes can be a a nice partner for several of our companies. That's why we invite them to be here and to, to show you their business and they can be, how they can be useful for our companies. Um, for several decades, ISEPS is our partner. So I have to have a word for, especially for, for Miguel that is here representing ISEP. Uh, but for all ISEP team that has been partner of Apicaps for something like three or four decades. Uh, so Apicaps looks to ISEP as a, as a partner for, essential partner for our main activity that is promoting the Portuguese shoes abroad. So it's a pleasure to have ISEP here. I will, I will pass the word to Miguel to, to present not only what we are doing here and the connection we, we, we want to choose, but also to bring you some uh, brief information about the German market and what's happening there and uh, how we can uh, help and take this market as opportunity for us. That's our second most important market for export our products. And, uh, and it's a good market to bring value to our companies and to learn of this very demanding market and very important for ourselves. So Miguel, I'll pass the word to you. Uh, and then I, I will say hello just right now to Saidu that uh, from We Want Shoes that will present the platform and the business that, uh, that can help our companies. So Miguel, your floor is yours. Thank you, João. Boa tarde a todos. Uh, Saidu, allow me to, to address the audience first in Portuguese and I will return the, the word to you. Uh, estou entre uh, especialistas e eu sou o único leigo. A ICEP aqui na Alemanha tem uma relação muito chegada e continuada com o setor e com a minha colega, através da minha colega Marta Vieira, que alguns de vocês conhecerão. Uh, estamos agora uh, aqui de Berlim a assistir esta semana à reabertura do comércio, ainda de forma tímida, mas nunca chegámos a viver aqui na Alemanha, o mesmo grau de aflição no tocante à questão de saúde pública que vivemos em Portugal. Hoje mesmo a chanceler Merkel, em discurso às oito e meia da manhã, sublinhava que o esforço de retomar a atividade não significa que a questão de saúde esteja resolvida bem pelo contrário. Há um grau de contágio aquém de um, o que é de algum modo tranquilizador, mas as medidas vão sendo graduais. E aqui, ao contrário de Portugal, há um processo descentralizado 
de uh, retomar a atividade. E a própria indústria tem uma palavra fortíssima a dizer e, portanto, há flexibilidade muito considerável. Ora bem, a ICEP tem convosco um compromisso de trabalhar e de vos ajudar a... Uh, ui, desculpem que eu tenho... Estou aqui a tentar apanhar uma apresentação. Desktop... Ora bem, estou a ter aqui uma dificuldade técnica de partilhar o ecrã. Conseguem ver o ecrã? Estão a ouvir? Conseguem Sim, ver o meu bom. ecrã? Já vemos. Muito bem. Muito bem. Então, nesse caso, o que é que eu gostava de vos transmitir? Esta é a apresentação mais extensa, vão recebê-la depois através da APICAPS e dos meus colegas da ICEP. Mas, fundamentalmente, o que gostávamos de nos transmitir é que estamos em profunda viragem. Claro está, o mercado alemão já não é este que historicamente terá sido. O mercado alemão é o mercado com o maior poder de compra, historicamente, e sabemos, em torno das grandes cidades da antiga Alemanha Ocidental. Um, é um mercado, portanto, em total de valor dentro da União Europeia o mais importante, contudo, também saberão que tem uma particularidade, é que, curiosamente, estando no centro da Europa, é, tem os alemães um hábito de consumo, uma propensão ao consumo, um gasto médio que é inferior ao da média da antiga Europa Ocidental e algo mais do que a antiga Europa do Leste. Não nos esqueçamos nunca que na Alemanha a austeridade é uma palavra que é uma virtude. Portanto, o, 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 o pulsar consumista é menor do que em muitos países ocidentais. O que é que cabe dizer em relação ao dia de hoje? Acaba de sair uma estatística, e convenhamos, é importante de sublinhar, estatística, o principal barómetro do sentimento ao consumidor, que é o índice GFK, saiu hoje e deu um trambolhão para níveis historicamente nunca atingidos. Uh, portanto, neste momento, e tendo a população alemã, não houve falha na cadeia logística ao consumo nos bens essenciais, mas uh, os gastos estiveram muito centrados uh, no, na alimentação. Uh, estamos a assistir aqui também a um número massivo de pessoas que foram para layoff, empresas a suspender a atividade. E agora, nesta retoma, há uma retração natural que não se vai dissipar de um dia para o outro. Portanto, é bom de ver isso como aspecto a sublinhar. Outro dado também relevante que saberão, e que já se manifestava antes do Covid, foi é a queda paulatina do retalho uh, na, no vosso setor, e portanto, em 2020, a grande incógnita é quantas mais lojas poderão fechar. O que nos leva a dizer com razoável garantia, a nossa extrapolação é que este ano já seria o ano em que o retalho online tomaria a maioria do, do, do valor vendido. E portanto, daqui para a frente, eu acho que é um point of no return, o online será cada vez mais determinante com tudo o que isto implica. Portanto, temos também, como sabem, um mercado conservador, que não cresce muito, mas que, obviamente, tem sido alimentado à custa de importações. É bom de ver que as importações para a Alemanha são maiores do que as vendas no mercado, porque há exportações, porque há as grandes marcas, nomeadamente o calçado esportivo. Mas, em termos de cadeias de retalho, como veem, estas são as principais e já em 2018 surge como relevante a Zalando. Zalando que se vai afirmar ainda mais neste ano de 2020 e esta tendência é imparável. É uma categoria, a do calçado, a que já é a sexta categoria mais importante no online, 
e obviamente alimentado por marcas fortes é uma tónica que se manterá. Portanto, os cenários traçados de acordo com diversos estudos que já apontavam para a relevância da progressão das vendas online pecam por estar desfasados, pecam por estar desatualizados, mas é bom de ver a relevância da Alemanha nesta matéria. Todas estas informações obviamente fazem parte de um, de um documento mais extenso que vos será feito chegar. Um, um dado de médio e longo prazo, porque aliás nós estamos aqui para refletir sobre o que se está a passar e também respeito a ligar o futuro. Um, há uma ferramenta que usamos com frequência que nos parece relevante, que é o Export Potential da Organização Mundial de Comércio e portanto estatisticamente não haverá esta descontinuidade, queremos que o mercado alemão continue a ser um mercado bastante relevante para uh, as, nossas, as nossas exportações no calçado, é um espaço de progressão e uh, uma outra tónica de comércio do bairro aqui ao lado, que é uma oportunidade que penso que em conjunto com o Rosto podemos trabalhar, que é o, o falso offline cada vez mais, como contraponto ao online, há o comércio de bairro interessante, que é o sapato por medida, que na verdade é executado, é produzido, produzido à distância. As medidas são aqui tomadas, mas são produzidos depois em Itália, em Espanha, na Áustria e, por que não, Portugal, diria eu. Portanto, as recomendações que fazem parte do, do, do nosso diálogo com as empresas num contexto pós-Brexit é cada vez mais importante falar-se alemão, comunicar-se com o cliente em alemão, um, caminhamos para o online, obviamente, e uh, a linguagem digital é fundamental nesse aspecto, um, uma chamada de atenção muito importante para quem já esteja a trabalhar o online, cuidado com a lei das embalagens que já está em vigor desde o ano passado e que deve ser cumprida. Todo o, toda a marca portuguesa que exporta uh, para a Alemanha se o faz para um cliente final tem que assumir o encargo da reciclagem e há regras a serem cumpridas. Portanto, não se esqueçam disso. Sorry, I, I extended my, my intervention a little bit longer, but no problem. fundamentally the purpose today is to hear from uh, Mr. Bangura about we want shoes, which we want, and uh, to, to learn a little bit more about their platform and to work together to boost our presence in uh, Germany. Thank you so much for your time and look forward to hearing from you. You have myself and my, my colleague, Marta Vieira, available to you uh, further on. Thank you. Um, Let me just take one minute. Uh, I forget to mention that the platform that we are using, the participants can put their questions and comments. Uh, if you look below your screen, you'll find a box to put your questions and a chat to introduce your comments. So please uh, introduce your, your, your questions on the question and answer uh, box so we can put the questions to the participants. Okay, we'll have a question and answer time in the end of this webinar. So Sadu, please. Yes, thank you, Miguel and Joao, for um, the introduction. Um, my name is Saidu Bangura. I am the CEO and founder of We Want Shoes, based in Berlin. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the teams of Apicups and uh, also, of course, uh, from ICEPS for the very nice invitation. So today, I would like to um, show you what we do and what We Want Shoes is. Um, and therefore, I would like to uh, share the screen. Uh, Miguel, I still see your screen. How can I? Oh, how can I? <laughs> get out of. Can you take me out? Okay, now, now it works. Yes. So, what is We Want Shoes? So, We Want Shoes is an online trade show for footwear, bags, and accessories. I hope you all can see my screen well. Uh, we started We Want Shoes six years ago. And the idea basically was to bring the concept of a trade show online. Yeah, so the idea is that everything that you can do on a physical trade fair, you also can do with us, which means that you can present your products in secure digital showrooms. You can connect with new buyers. Um, people can place orders 
and you can do brand communication. Yeah. Uh, currently, we do work with over 200 brands on the platform um, and have built a network of, in total, 22,000 international buyers, of which 55% are from the German-speaking countries, meaning Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and 45% are international buyers, uh, and that means mainly Europe. Yeah, Benelux, uh, Scandinavia, UK, France, etc. Um, Sixty percent of those retailers that we uh, work with are fashion retailers, and thirty-five percent of them are shoe retailers. And people use us as a trend and information platform to discover new brands and also for pre and stock ordering, of course. Um, because you know we were quite successful with what we do. Uh, we were asked by many people, and especially buyers, if there wasn't something that we also could do for uh, other um, products and other market segments. And that's why we started another platform called The Brand Show, which is dedicated for contemporary fashion and sustainability, working uh, according to the same principles as We Won't Choose. But let's come, come back to We Won't Choose itself. Um, so what you have to, to understand is, or what makes us special, as well as that we do work a lot with video um, because we, we, we heavily and we clearly um, think that this is a powerful media that is to the benefit um, of brands uh, because it can tell the brand story in a much more dynamic, emotional and personal way than any other media could. So um, those videos, we do produce them also ourselves. So we are also a video production company. Um, and here, in this case, you see uh, a brand from, from uh, Copenhagen, Stolberg Copenhagen. And this is the designer. She came to our studio, and here she's presenting her brand uh, like she would do it at a trade fair or in the showroom. So we are a pure B2B marketplace, yeah, which means that on our platform, it's only companies. So it's the brands or the agencies representing those brands. And each one of those companies has their own digital showroom. So what a stand is on a physical trade fair, a, stand, uh, a digital showroom is on our platform. We have different areas like urban, premium, bags, essential, etc. So one showroom can be in uh, multiple uh, areas at the same time. So for example, if you have uh, premium shoes that are ethical, you could be in both sections at the same time. Uh, let's take a look at what those showrooms look like. Um, so here also a great brand from Portugal, by the way, uh, Baluta. And this is what a showroom looks like. And what you have to understand is that those showrooms are private, which means that only the people that you invite or people that we invite for you, if that is what you wish, um, or people that discover you on the platform and um, that knock on the door of your showroom and that you let in are allowed to enter. Um, inside of the showroom, um, you can create as many product presentations as you like, you know, different seasons, different topics. And then the buyers that you have let in, um, then go inside of the showroom, view the products, and then can say, oh, um, this is something what I like, you know, um, I am going to place my order. Okay. So now then, uh, you then here see the order and um, will then noti be notified by email. Um, and then, you know, uh, this is basically, first of all, an, an order request. So you always can uh, downturn your uh, order or you can accept it, depending on. And then um, if you accept it, the business is between you and the buyer. So there are no financial transactions through our site. Um, so you always remain in control who you're doing business with. Um, and you know everything else like uh, invoicing, contract, etc., is done outside of the platform. Also, for orders taken inside of the showroom, we don't take any commission. Yeah, but what we basically do get is a fee, like a rent, um, for um, for the showroom itself. This is basically how we finance ourselves, among other services that we have. So this digital showroom, of course, is a great help and a great sales tool. So for example, just imagine you are, let's say at Mecom, you know, or in your showroom and the buyer walks up to your stand and he likes the collection very much. 
uh, but for some kind of reason cannot place the order and has to leave. So what can you do? What you can do is you can invite that person in your digital showroom and in the evening at the hotel room or back at the office um, at, the desk, at their desk, they can take a look at your collection again and then place their order if they want to. But in any case, are always linked to your product catalog so that you know, also in, in, uh, at a later stage, they can um, take a look at your offerings again, uh, see what you have on stock, because that is also something that we support here in our system. Um, and then can, you know, um, is always up to date about what you guys do. Um, of course, you also can invite clients, yeah, and you can uh, send invitations directly from your showroom to one or multiple in, 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 in buyers. You can put a, a title, a language, uh, add an image, put the invitation message, and then add one or many, many email addresses. And then, um, you know, those people are, um, if accepted, those people are in immediately into your showroom. Um, you also can manage your visitors, of course. Um, so for example, here's a list of people that have access to your showroom, you know, uh, and here you get, all, of course, all the contact details that are so important to you uh, to do the follow-up, you know, email addresses, um, website, um, postal code, et cetera, et cetera. So this is, of course, very, very valuable for your team because then they can do the follow-ups. You can have managers of your showroom, meaning that you can share, uh, have people from your organization also managing your showroom. And here, for example, um, this is, um, you know, those, those people could be, um, you know, your sales agents, for example, you know, the guy from the north, the south, the west, and the east. And by using this, you can say, uh, manage your network of sales representatives. This would be a, an access request. This is what it looks like. So this is somebody who wants to visit your showroom because they liked what they saw from the outside. So they basically send you a visit request and then you exactly can see you know, who they are, um, can get in contact with them if you want to. And if you feel that this buyer is good for you because it suits and it corresponds to your sales strategy, then you can say, yes, I will approve it or no, I will block him or her. Uh, so this is basically like on Facebook or LinkedIn if somebody wants to be your friend or uh, wants to be your connection. Yeah. Uh, and then, very valuable as well, as well uh, you have statistics, um, meaning that not only do you know who has access to your showroom, because that is clear, uh, you've selected them, but also what they did in your showroom. Uh, so here, for example, you have an overview on the 10 most viewed items, um, which means that this gives you feedback how people perceive your collection and what are the most uh, interesting pieces. And then here, for example, you can see um, when, which buyer has visited your showroom for the last time. Yeah? Uh, so here, that person was in a, at a specific date, but only had a look at one product, which means that you know, she probably is not that interested. But here you have somebody, um, you know, and she took a look at 12 products and also downloaded um, plenty of um, you know, press releases and marketing material that you can upload in your product uh, in your showroom as well. And that tells you, oh, that person really must be interested. So your salespeople then can get in contact with her, pick up the phone and say, hi, great, you visited our digital showroom. Um, you know, how can I help you? And do the follow up. You know, there are many other great features, uh, sales features, of course, that you can have. You can have um, your discounts in there. You can have, set up lots. You can have series. Um, you can update your stock quantities if you want to. Um, and um, yeah, um, another great feature is that you can, um, you know, upload all your press releases in a marketing section that uh, the showroom also provides, like, um, you know, PDF formats, like lookbooks, select like press releases, but also high resolution images, um, etc. And then, you know, for all salespeople, uh, an interesting feature, um, you can create proposals, you know, um, you are in contact with a client or one already existing client and you know exactly what they want, you know, um, then you can basically pre-fill an order um, and send it to them, uh, a proposal, and they can then uh, modify the order if they want to and then uh, send it back to you. So this is a great way to get in contact with uh, new clients, but also with existing clients. And then, um, you know, all of this basically happens within the showroom and it's private and cannot be viewed from the outside. 
because this is just an interaction between you and each respective buyer. But then you also have a public part on the site um, that allows you to gain visibility in the market. Yeah. Um, so each one of the news that have been published here has been published by one of the showrooms on the platform. And this, of course, um, helps you. This is for your brand image, your brand communication. And here you can tell the story of your brand, who you are, what you do, uh, what inspires you, if you have any projects, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then people um, can get to know you through this. You know? um, here, for example, this is Camusa. It's an ethical brand from Spain. And they have like a, um, like a corporation with El Naturalista Shoes. And here they present a video of um, this specific model. And through this, um, buyers can get to know them. You know, you get an idea of who they are, what they do. And if, if they like what, uh, what they see, the buyers, they can knock on the door of the showroom and then um, you know, a request to visit uh, the showroom, send you the request, and do, you then get the, the email notification and then can say, yes, this person may come in. No, this person may not come in. And this is also a great way to generate leads in the market. And then uh, we have here the order calendar. And the order calendar is a place where you can publish all your sales and marketing events, you know, uh, like trade show attendances. Um, I'm going to be at Mecham. Um, I will be at Gallery Shoes and Düsseldorf, all this, you know. And then you can create like, um, like an event uh, for each um, individual event that you're having. And the buyers then can see um, where to find you and where to meet you physically. Yeah, so for example, this is Campa from, from Spain. And they say that they are going to be at that specific place at that specific time. And people then can, um, you know, register for that event uh, so that you know that they will be coming. There's also like a, like a guest list feature. Um, so this is a, also a way to, you know, get visibility in the market. And then here, um, we have Sprintware, and Sprintware is also a public part of the site. It's one of our latest projects. And here, this is a marketplace, a public marketplace for stock products, for products that can be immediately over at the retailers within a very short period of time. Yeah. And so um, all the showrooms on the platform can publish the stock and what is available immediately here. And buyers can come here and uh, basically look for the products um, that they are looking for, you know, and find the products that they are looking for. Um, so because we do speak to buyers a lot, of course, and what we, the feedback that we are getting is that, you know, they want to be more flexible when it comes to ordering. So, um, you know, and they are also a bit reluctant when it comes to, you know, um, increasing the pre-ordering. Um, so, you know, this is a great way, of course, for them to, react to certain trends in the markets that, that they didn't see uh, coming like six months ago when they had the pre-ordering or they want to buy some additional highlights for their stores yeah or um, you know they are it's raining outside and they are looking for rubber boots and then they can, can type in rubber boots yeah and then the system will show who's offering rubber boots in the market yeah and buyers um, we spoke to buyers and they said well yes we would like to take on new brands on board but, you know, if we do so, uh, because there's always a, somewhat of a risk, we want to be flexible. If we do so, we want to have the merchandise now. So we see this also, the Sprintware marketplace, also as an opportunity to get a foot in the door with retailers through stock ordering and to, through the stock offerings that you have. And um, so the buyer finds the, the products here. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, they don't see the prices. You see the prices you, because you have a look, a look over my shoulder and I have admin rights, but um, they um, don't see that, of course. And if they are interested in, um, in doing business with that specific showroom that has published this, pro uh, this product, they can knock on the door of that showroom and um, you know, a request to visit the showroom. The showroom owner, the brand, can decide if they want to do business with a specific buyer or not. And if they do so, then um, the, they, they can place an order. And uh, from that um, order, we do get a transaction fee of, of 8% in that specific case. And um, yeah, so this is a relatively short uh, overview on 
the services itself. So let me tell you uh, uh, the platform itself. So let me tell you about our services in general. Um, so what you have to have in order to uh, be present on our marketplace is a digital showroom, the tool itself to present your products, but also to interact with other users on the, pl on the platform. So it's basically a rent that we are getting. And um, so you have to have that, you know, um, and then other services add on top. Um, so there are, for example, video productions. Oh, I have to shrink this a bit. So there are video productions that we are offering different formats. Um, for example, here, um, in, um, here, for example, let's go here to, let's go here to uh, Zeox. Um, you know, um, so if you here, for example, this is Zeox, and this is a video that we did shoot for them um, at Mecam. Um, and here, the managing director, Levin Werner, is talking about, you know, the upcoming um, collection or the current collection that they were showing uh, back in, in February. Um, and, um, you know, giving, he's giving an outlook, um, you know, what to expect in the showroom. You know, this is one smaller form format, for example. Um, one of the bigger formats that we are having is, um, the, is the video ordering book. So, for example, here in that case, we go to um, the companies with a camera team for one or two days and then shoot a video for each individual product. Um, so then you have somebody from the sales team presenting each individual product. And then, um, you know, the, the buyer and the showroom then, of course, um, they can take a look at it and do get um, an, a, a presentation of each individual product and are, you know, and quietly can get an overview uh, along with the sales pitch done by the team. Um, this, this format is, is a great format because um, it helps you define how uh, people should describe uh, or how your product should be described. Yeah? And this is great, for example, if you hand over collections to sales agents. Yeah? Uh, so, for example, um, you know, it's not that uh, after every, uh, every collection presentation, everybody still knows uh, you know, how, what, what every shoe can and how to describe it. But by having a video like this, you then can um, you know, define this once for all. And what we also found is that retailers also use those videos in order to teach their sales personnel that is out uh, at, at the store and that has to, um, and that, that have to, to sell those products to the final consumer. Yeah. Um, so there are, you know, many advantages to this. And of course, it's a lot more personal, um, et cetera. Um, and then another great service that we are offering is the so-called matchmaking. Yeah. Match, what is matchmaking? Matchmaking means that we proactively um, connect you with people in the market that fit a profile that you define. Yeah? So in the beginning, we do sit down with you and would ask you, um, who do you want to get in contact with in the market? And uh, then maybe you define something like, oh, I would like to get in contact with fashion retailers in the mid-price segment, um, in Benelux or in the German speaking countries. And then we would um, take a close look in our database. And of course, because we um, you know, speak to buyers on a daily basis, uh, also by the experience and all the, also by uh, you know, personal contacts that we have, we then would invite buyers directly from our database into your digital showroom. Yeah. Um, and that, of course, um, you know, of course, we are no sales agents. This is not what we do. But literally speaking, we are standing at the entrance of a trade show. Um, do take the buyers by the hand, bring them to your stand and say, hi, this is Mr. XYZ. We think that you should meet him because he fits your profile. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, this is a great way um, to, to activate buyers in the market. Um, we also do calling campaigns um, for, for, for people that, that want that. Uh, where we uh, call certain buyers in the market and then recommend your brand to them, uh, do send them an invitation and, um, yeah, and, you know, connect you uh, through this. And then, of course, there is Brintware, um, the, the marketplace I was talking about. Um, and here we proactively help you to sell your stock, um, you know, by having marketing 
um, by marketing campaigns, email campaigns, um, you know, personal contacts, and um, yeah. So this is basically those are the the, the services that we as a as a platform uh, provide. And um, yeah, this is basically a first uh, view um, because there's there's much much more. But I thought that you know uh, it's it's very helpful. Um, to, to make it uh, short and, um, and compact. Um, one thing that I wanted to, um, to talk to you about um, is an offer that we have due to the uh, current crisis. Um, as we all know, the, the situation, there are many, many question marks um, when it comes how the season will go on. Um, that, you know, when it comes to the retailers, now some retailers are opening again, but that is not clear for all for all, for all markets. Um, you know, there's also a big question mark when it comes to trade shows, for example. You know, um, where to show your products? Um, at least in Germany, uh, trade shows are being cancelled. Uh, so probably, except for gallery shoes that um, still plan on doing something um, in the beginning of September, there won't be any. Uh, trade shows basically taking place in Germany, any bigger trade shows in Germany, uh, you know, um, Neo Newt in Berlin. So Berlin basically is not happening at all. Um, you know, Premium also has cancelled for those that uh, exhibit there. Um, Panorama doesn't exist anymore, uh, insolvency. Um, Neo Newt uh, trade show um, also had to cancel. So the big question basically is where to show your products. And that's why we came up with the idea uh, and this is like, a, we call it an emergency aid package um, that we um, as a platform have to play our role in this um, as a platform by providing the opportunity to brands to showcase their products uh, on our marketplace, uh, to have at least some visibility in the market um, and to be able to, you know, um, at least show some products. Um, and this is an offer that we is, this is a, a free offer that we do. Uh, as I told you before, um, usually you have to pay in order to be visible on our platform. But with this free offer, um, that free offer basically would give you the opportunity um, to uh, be listed um, here uh, on, uh, on the marketplace, hold on, um, under companies, um, to have a digital showroom. Uh, on our marketplace and to list your products on the stock marketplace. Yeah, of course, um, we are also a business, which means that um, this is, um, you know, of course, we're interested also in selling our, our goods and services, that's clear, but this is something that, that we offer for free. Uh, but it's like a reduced feature set that we are offering uh, at, at the moment. But it gives you at least the, the, the ability and the opportunity to showcase yourself. Um, the, there are limits to this free uh, offer, of course. So if there is success for you guys, then um, it's after this, we would sit down with you and, um, and ask you if you want to continue after this. Uh, then you would have to go for a uh, paid version. If you don't want to continue, you don't have to continue, of course. Uh, so there are certain limits to this. So after you have reached um, a certain number of buyers or uh, after the first orders have been placed, you know, then you guys basically can see if this works for you. Um, and then we have a you know um, friendly talk how this should go on, and um, but this is a, this is an offer that I um, you know specifically wanted to make also today um, to you know notify you about this opportunity, and also um, this is also a way to basically get to know us, get to know our platform, and I think personally think uh, this could be a great way for Portuguese brands to get visibility not only in the German speaking market because we are a European platform but, um, you know, internationally as well. Thank you. Thank you, Fadu. Thank you for, for your presentations. I have here some questions okay. for, both, for both of you. Uh, I, will, I, I can start by one that can be replied by both of you. Here we have a participant that is asking for, uh, other than, than Zalando, which is uh, from our view of the main business to consumer platform, can you help us to identify other business to consumer 
as uh, this platform is based, is clearly focused on connecting business to business. So you are focused on business to business. Can you raise some other um, platforms that are focused on business to consumer other than Zalando? Question to me or? Uh, probably Miguel is more, more well known in the market. Yes, uh, you have the two biggest are uh, Amazon is uh, present and prevalent in all the segments for sure. Zalando is specialized in fashion, definitely. Then you have also a natural migration of the, the, the offline bricks and mortar retailers into the online. Uh, Otto in a different segment is also trying, historically the catalog seller uh, uh, in Germany is also migrating and it is a, a, a German equivalent of uh, Amazon that's also relevant uh, but then you have also to, to th these are relevant players uh, we've had we are having uh, conversations with uh, with Otto in this respect but uh, for that for the time being this is the kind of uh, marketplace that requi requires companies to have a domestic logistic arm. So they have to be present in Germany and to, to ensure the, the distribution in Germany. So you cannot deliver out of Portugal. It may change, but this is another aspect to, to bear in, in consideration. Okay. I, I wanted to add, to add that, you know, especially if you want to do, there are quite a few platforms like Otto, as you said, um, you know, there are basically two ways basically to get into the market through those platforms. Um, either they buy or order your products. You know, they have buyers, uh, go, you know, running around on trade shows and ordering your pro uh, products. Uh, and then the other thing is the marketplace model. But then you have to be able, as, as um, Miguel said, uh, to um, deliver, to do the delivery and shipping uh, on, for, uh, on, for single items, you know. That is very important. Um, I mean, they have this integration also because they also have a warehouse. Um, you also can book this if you want to. Um, they have like like lo like logistics services, um, but it's also um, pretty cost in intensive. Um, you know, uh, because at the end you also have to see you know what what you still have left at the at the end. So um, if you're interested, I can you know get you in contact with those people. There are also other platforms like uh, Shure 24 for example, um, which is uh, like, a, um, like, a, like a hub that basically until now worked mainly with retailers, um, you know, uh, footwear retailers, and that would take uh, the goods that they have and uh, display them and sell them uh, on various marketplaces. They are connected to 42 marketplaces in total, you know, for example. But, uh, and they start also to do uh, some business with, uh, with brands now. Um, they are also a partner of ours. Um, but here the same, you have to be able to do the logistics from Germany. Because otherwise it's too cost intensive because of retours. So, so do we have here two or three questions specifically about the platform. One, one is, uh, is very clear how we can work with you, or how can they contact you and what are the next steps. So I believe uh, you can have um, your contact yes. details so we can share with us. Yes. Um, thank you for reminding me because I almost, <laughs> I almost forget. So this is, a, uh, this is the email address uh, where, you all guys, where you guys all can contact me. Uh, so we would be happy to, um, you know, to um, yeah, talk to you and answer your questions. Uh, if, you have further, if you want to know anything further about Germany, about the market, about us, you know, then please get in contact with us. Um, don't be afraid by the sales. <laughs> We're not only sales oriented, but you know, uh, this is just uh, an email address. Um, and I'm pretty sure um, I also will pass on this information to Joao and uh, to Miguel. So if anybody um, has um, questions, then please get in contact. We are open. We are willing to take your questions. Um, and, um, you know, of course, uh, we also can send you further um, um, information material. 
So of course it would be handy, Joao um, and Miguel, if we also could get um, email addresses of the attendee uh, of the visitors here, uh, so that we can send something. So we always can send something, and uh, you you're welcome to, to contact us anytime. We have here one or two questions more about numbers or technical things. One of one of them is trying to understand what are your based off retailers. So can you share with us the number of retailers and from which countries they are? Yep. Uh, and another thing that is clearly technical is about the managing manager of stocks. So you are you are our companies are presenting some stocks on on uh, on the website and platform. How they can be managed, and if you have the possibility of those stocks to be integrated with uh, the the system that the companies already have at home. Yes. So uh, coming to the, the to the first question, um, th this is the number of retailers that we work with. Um, in total, it's 22,000 that have developed, uh, this number has developed over the last five, uh, five six years. Um, you know, 55% German speaking, 45% international, 60% uh, fashion retailers, 35% shoe retailers. Um, we work, because we, we uh, represent a, a, the broad market, like comfort shoes as well as, as premium shoes, um, we have a very broad range of, of retailers. Um, of course, the big uh, online platforms like Zalando, uh, About You, and, and those. Then the big department stores like Oininger, Pick and Kloppenburg, uh, and those. Um, and, but also the very small uh, independent um, retailers from smaller cities, countryside, um, coastal, uh, rural, etc. You know, uh, all those stores that are very often very underestimated because that's where also a lot of turnover is happening uh, because you know um, Germany is like a federal country um, and you would be amazed how much turnover is made in those rural areas you know um, in Niedersachsen for example etc. Um, second question can it be integrated? Um, yes um, so we uh, so there's a way there are ways to import um, the products um, either by Excel, and we also have an API now where you also can uh, update your um, your uh, stock quantities uh, and, and can push those numbers. So that is something that that can be done. Okay, we have here uh, some other one. One is about the the managing of the orders. So when people put their orders in in the, in the website. Uh, um, they can put an order of, for different brands, or they can choose only one brand, and uh, they are dealing specific one brand. They don't have a multiple brand orders. Um, they can you see my screen now? Um, so a yes, buyer. Okay, a buyer um, can visit a. Um, so an order is always by um, done in one showroom. Yeah, so the buyer goes to one showroom, then places an order there, and goes to, to the other showroom and places the order there. Yeah, um, it's like, like you have it on, uh, on a trade fair, basically, uh, where you go to, to, uh, to the brand A, and then uh, you place an order with him, and, or you go to the, to the brand B, and then you place an order with them. Okay. Um, you, we have seen that, that uh, companies can see the list of uh, people that have visited their showrooms in the, the last uh, month. Can that data be exported so they can integrate in their mailing lists? Yes, or, of course. Or of they course. have to contact them through your website? No, no, no. Um, you, can, you, you would get the, the, the contact details um, of buyers. You can export them. Yeah, um, so this is absolutely possible. It's actually, it's like on, on a trade fair, right? If you, if you are at Mecam, if you have a stand at Mecam, then um, you also get the data from people visiting you through the business cards that they have. So um, it's the same here. Okay. Um, you mentioned that uh, you are offering this platform for, for, uh, for a trial period. Uh, do you define how long this, this free offer is, is in charge? Uh, can we have a, Another idea about the investment that is uh, being made by an average company on the platform, because you cannot do only be in the platform. You have to organize a video, you have to, uh, to put your photos on the platform, you have to have someone that, that uploads everything to the platform. 
So can, yes. can we have an idea of the, the full investment uh, that is here in, in charge? Yes. Um, first of all, um, when it comes to this free offer, um, it's an offer that, that we, this is an offer that we are making until the end of um, next season, meaning by the end of October, because we feel that this is a crucial period and, you know, we want to help, you know. Um, there are limits um, to, to this, to this uh, model, uh, to, to, to this um, um, showroom type. Um, if you have reached those limits, um, then, you know, then the question comes, do you want to continue or not? So uh, it's not a time, it's not defined by, this, this trial is not de defined by time, but by success, basically. Yeah. Um, so in the best case, um, the, you reach those limits the very next day, yeah, because you have plenty of buyers in your showroom and you have plenty of orders. And, or in the worst case, um, there's nobody in your showroom and there's nothing going on. Yeah, and this is maybe until, I don't know, uh, and then maybe yourself say at the end of October, okay, this is not for me, you know. So there is no time limit to this, really. It's, it's really based on success. Um, when it comes to prices, um, so you have to have a showroom. And um, so um, let's, let's start with a showroom that can do everything. So this showroom here with the showroom, you can have the pre-order, you can do the stock order and sprintware, you can publish your news, events, um, you can do everything. And this is, uh, starts at, um, this costs 960 euros uh, for one year. Um, because, you know, we, this is like a subscription, basically. This is how it works. Um, so um, it's like, basically, like, a, like your mobile phone contract a bit, you know, when it comes to the, to the business model. Um, and so this is what you have to have. Not necessarily this, this one, but if you want to do everything, then we would recommend you to start here. And then you can add um, further services on top, like video productions that are not mandatory, but that are optional. But of course, we would recommend you, uh, for example, absolutely to do this matchmaking. And that starts at another, let's say, um, 1,100 for six months or so, and uh, adding to the 960. And then if you put a small video on top, then you are at 2,500 euros for 12 months, for example. Yeah? Uh, of course, you can go much broader and much bigger if you want to. Um, you know, you can do a big calling campaign and then you probably would pay like 2,000 just for the campaign and then, or you can have a big showroom or you can have big videos. So this is basically like putting together a menu basically, um, you know, depending on your needs. If you want to have an additional newsletter that is sent out to, um, you know, all the 22,000 contacts in German language and in, uh, in English, uh, then this is also on top. So. Um, for this, I think the best would be to get in contact and then to see what it is that we can do for you. Um, actually, uh, putting up the, um, the products and uh, product data and all this is not hard at all. And just to, to show you, um, da -da 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 -da. let's take this one here again. Um, so this is something that you easily can do yourself, uh, and, um, but we also can help. Yeah? So for example, if you want to add a product, you can do this manually uh, by typing in a title, the description. You can select um, an image or two or three. Uh, you can give it a different order. Um, yeah, and then you have text that you have to put. Um, you can add a video um, here. You can say if, it's, it's, if it should be public, sizes, etc. And then it's in. So it's actually not that hard, but there's, there are also other ways. Um, to, um, to, to upload them uh, by, by import with an Excel, basically, that would be um, provided by you. Um, and of course, we also help you with this. Um, a showroom can be ready within four or five days. Uh, pretty much depends on um, what material you give us, basically, what, how fast you can provide it to us. Um, once we have, for example, um, the Excel import list, the import itself just takes one hour maximum. Uh, so the work is basically to provide us with, with this Excel uh, sheet uh, with our product information, title, um, sizes, um, prices, et cetera, et cetera. Um, usually this is something that people do get uh, through export from their ERP system. Yeah, so 
we have you we have you one or two questions about uh, the the level of uh, um, sales that are made through your platform i don't know if you have uh, any numbers that can be shared and uh, how much has been increased during the last years and during this year uh, because uh, we think that uh, people are we have the feeling that people are trying to move to online so can we have an idea of the importance of this platform and on top of that uh, api caps both represent footwear but also leather goods uh, i see that you have some leather goods companies there what are the importance of this platform for them and how are you how different they are from the shoe industry yeah um so let's start with the with the last question um like last year basically um because there were some some there was some requests from buyers we also started um to take bags on board so we do work with some uh, this is a uh, this is a build-up basically uh, but we already have a few great um, bags brands here like Picar, which is a market leader uh, in in germany and uh, other other brands as well um the um, so the the response and also requests by buyers is actually very good um generally speaking one has to say though that you know the, especially if you so you always have to make a difference between fashion stores and for example bag stores the typical bag stores in germany um the latter are uh, a bit more traditional not as open i have to say sometimes um but um you know it works well we are quite satisfied but um you know compared to the fashion people um or the fashion stores they are definitely more conservative uh, but for fashion people uh, for the fashion stores it works really well um they understand everything immediately um they also buy differently than um, those traditional uh, bags stores um you know that are very important by the way uh, for the german market um and um when it comes to the ordering um i'm not going to share any numbers <laughs> of course not but what i can say is that we basically always have doubled uh, the, the all the vol volume um over the years um and that especially in the last one and two years um things were really really going up that i can say um is there an average that anybody could expect on the platform um really no um of course we can build an average but it pretty much depends on how you as a brand want to use uh, your show showroom and presence on the on, on our platform um depends on the case um for example we do have um uh, brands like camel active for example that have switched off their ordering functionality because they uh, only want to um use the showroom in order to be visible and in order to be uh, to show their products to internet to the international market so uh, their target is not really to do the sales through our platform but to get the visibility on the other hand you have um brands that use their digital showroom as their b2b area yeah so they will use our tool basically because they don't have any um to do all the 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 um the stock ordering um and um, the the sales from existing customers uh, through this platform so and then you have brands using us for pre-ordering and then you have big brands small brands so it's pretty hard to come up with numbers um but of course if if you ask us um then we pretty much could tell you what to expect in a, in a, on a personal level um then we can i have here two questions that they can try to relate themselves one is is about the prices so i i realize that platform has two prices i see that one is the the factory prices and the other one i suspect is the retail recommended prices i mean am i correct yes. so So brands can show them show both prices for for the the retailer. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, it, 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 that it, it, that the, the platform is mainly in German. What are, what do you think is the the importance of the German language to connect with German retailers? Uh, yeah. Is it that the high high importance, or they are able to to speak English and uh, to make their business in English also? Um, that's a big topic and uh, i'm glad we're coming up with this uh, with this question uh, because there is of course a language issue or you know uh, this is something that matters um because um you know 
for the for the big and for the international retailers, they all speak English. But then you also have a big number of stores, um, also especially in the former Eastern, um, you know, East East uh, East German countries, um, that don't speak English that well. That is something that's that's the way it is, you know, because they didn't learn it in school because they learned Russian back then, you know. And uh, so it's a topic, but you know, there are great businesses still. Um, but you know, of course, it helps. Um, if you can translate, for example, product description into German, that is something that helps. And it also helps if there is somebody um, that could translate or that speaks the language. That having said, um, you know, if, if somebody is really interested in your product, then they will walk the extra mile and you know, will try to get in contact with you. And, um, and you know, it might work well. Uh, but yes, of course, language is always um, a topic. Okay, I have two other things. One is about the retailers. You have a lot of retailers uh, listed on so that can work in this database. Do you have any mechanisms to certify that uh, they are reliable? Or we have to check everyone that uh, put an order on our showroom? The other thing is, it's about the showrooms. A lot of our companies have more than one brand. They can mix some, both brands in the same showroom or they, are, they have to have two contracts with you for each brand? Um, yeah, so um, when it comes to the, the buyers, uh, do we certify them? No, we don't certify them. Um, what we, because certifying buyers basically would mean putting a break on the fluidity of contacts basically. You know, if we had to check every buyer first before they, um, before they can um, come into your showroom, then um, this would basically take too long. Um, also, it would, also, if you then sort of invite people, um, you know, then we couldn't tell you who to invite and who not to invite. So, um, but what we do, of course, is we check the email addresses. Yeah, those are checked. Um, we also tell everybody that, you know, if you have here, for example, like a request, access request, yeah, um, that, so this you see, this is correct, yeah. So if you have somebody like um, Susanne Müller at uh, gmail.com, mm, I don't know. If you have somebody like uh, Susanne Müller at uh, Browninger.de, then you know that at least she's from Browninger. Uh, we always recommend to either give them a phone call uh, to check, to check online, um, etc. Um, in case of doubt, you also can ask us and then we can do the research. Um, but no, we are not doing any um, solvency check, for example. This is not something that we do. Um, but, you know, this is something that, I mean, it's like, like on a trade fair, you know. Um, if there's somebody walking up to you and placing an order, it's all, also up to you uh, to make that check if they are solvent, for example, if they are real. Um, yeah, or, you know, exactly. Now then, um, when it comes to the, to the brands, mm, we recommend that each brand uh, is supposed to have their own digital showroom, um, simply because um, usually each brand has its own identity and its own story. And um, if you have mixed showrooms, then also the story is getting mixed. Um, and that, of course, especially if you have, if those brands have different target groups, like uh, if you have like a premium brand and one is, would be more like a, um, like a, a little bit cheaper and more mass oriented brand, then uh, they probably would have totally different um, target groups and target clients. Um, and that doesn't mix. And it's, uh, so we always recommend to have um, different show, uh, one showroom per brand. Okay, I finally have one question is about uh, COVID and the virus. And how do you think that, uh, will, that uh, the virus and this move in the economy will impact uh, your business and uh, our industry also in Portugal? Because you have been in contact with uh, some of our companies who sometimes understand also our business. Uh, seeing it from Berlin, how do you think that uh, COVID-19 will impact our, our business? Um. It will be a big impact, 
that is clear. Um, and I, I think that's what one already can say now is that, you know, after this, um, things will not be the same anymore. That's, that's very clear. Um, how it's affecting our business? Well, of course, um, this, this crisis is pushing digital, uh, of course, and the way how we use online tools, uh, etc., in private life as well as uh, on the business side. Um, you know, in, in the private, we all of a sudden people that were skeptic of uh, online tools all of a sudden use Zoom because, you know, to see their families, um, etc., etc. You know, big companies that were afraid of allowing home office are buying notebooks for their employees and all of a sudden we are sitting at home or etc. And it's all, you know, so ways are being changed through this. Um, and uh, we clearly see, of course, that, you know, online is, or, is, is a solution for this. Um, and um, yeah, I would like to, to use this opportunity as well um, to uh, encourage everybody to make that step into the online world. And because certain things um, have to work as well, you know, uh, or there are certain um, things that you have to have. Um, and that's our, that are, of course, images. Uh, so imagery is very, very important because a product in a digital world, a, um, a product that doesn't have an image simply doesn't exist, you know, and ca cannot be sold, cannot be viewed, cannot be, um, you know, transported, how, however you want to call it. Um, and that, of course, demands that, um, that you as a brand um, sort of make sure that you have images right from the beginning. This is something, uh, and this can be also an opportunity, by the way, for producers, especially in Portugal, because you are such a great producing company, uh, country. Um, because if you don't only produce the shoes and footwear itself, but also the, 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 the imagery, for example, that go along with the sample product, uh, this could also be another business revenue. You know, why not say we produce the shoes, but we also make sure that there is images of their shoes as well, you know? Uh, so, because you are at the source, basically. Um, and then you can provide, um, you have those images, you can start, you know, using those images for your B2B sales. Um, people can, you can pass them on to your agents in wherever they are, in the UK, in Germany, etc. And they also can, you know, they also can use them. Um, and then later on, maybe those same images can be used for e-commerce, you know, for the, for the retailers that are supposed to uh, sell your shoes. So um, I think it really makes sense to think about this and to find ways um, as an industry also maybe um, to come up with a solution. Um, okay, this is online. When it comes to, um, to, to the physical business, um, we see that, you know, of, of course, COVID is, um, yeah, is changing the production because, you know, in some countries at the moment, there is no production going on or it's picking up again. Um, it changes, you know, uh, the, the materials, you know, whoever is using um, Italian or had, wants to use Italian leathers uh, at this moment uh, probably has a problem. Um, you know, so, um, yeah, it's, it's changing the industry in, in many, many ways. And what I see in the, in the, in the upcoming future is, is a trend with retailers, um, what I already mentioned, um, that they, they have a liquidity problem at the moment, of course. Yeah. Um, so they probably want to avoid the pre-order a bit uh, or re reduce the pre-order you know, uh, as much as they can and be more flexible when it comes to um, you know, purchasing merchandise in some other way. Um, so I think I see a trend to stock and to never out of stock collections. Um, yeah. Miguel, can you can I have a, we we keep this idea that uh, photos of uh, of having a, uh, nice photos of the collection right after they are ready. It's really important because without photos you cannot sell anything online or you can have even promote your products online and contact your clients. So it's a it's a huge message. So people can have that in their mind. Miguel, can I have your opinion about COVID and how that will impact our industry? Uh, seeing it from Berlin? Yes, certainly. Uh, well, uh, Berlin is very atypical 
in the sense that Berlin is the only capital in the world where the average income, the purchasing power, is below the average of the country. You don't have it anywhere else. Berlin is young, is very cosmopolitan, but it's not as wealthy as the rest of Germany. Uh, and uh, what can I say? Depending on the extent of this crisis, and uh, uh, Chancellor Merkel was highlighting today, we are still in the early stages of the disease. So this can have a direct impact on the purchasing power and the willingness to, to, to buy. We have seen, so the, the shops reopening and uh, people are willing to go back into to, to buying, but will this translate into an immediate take up of the present collection? Possibly not. This can have an impact and can have a lasting impact. I've also witnessed, and this was a trend that was already taking place before the crisis of uh, stationary retail closing. And uh, in Berlin, you have a famous street, which is the Kudam, which is the Champs Elysees. And you can see some insignias that were already closing their shops. So, we have to be on the moderate side. There's one dimension I would like to, to, to focus also. You, you ask about the credibility, solvency of companies. ISEP can help you. We have a certain amount of credits which we can use to check on the credibility of companies. Up until that level, we can help you, uh, the Portuguese companies, to inquire. If we, we go above, well, uh, then it's not possible, but there's the willingness in that respect. Um, so this is uh, basically, it. Um, I would very much highlight that uh, together with me is Marta Vieira, and uh, she's uh, uh, the expert on the shoe sector, and so always available to talk with the companies, and she's constantly following everything that is happening in this particular retail uh, sector. So she's the more knowledgeable than I. Thank you. Okay. Um, a final comment. To, I'm, uh, I'm here sharing the, some data that has been received here from one of our participants. Uh, he shares with us that uh, online sales for, for this kind of product is expected to decrease 50%. So online sales are increasing for all products, but are decreasing for these specific products. Um, because uh, people are not buying shoes or leather goods at this moment, and not even online because they don't need it. Uh, how do you see it and uh, what do you expect to move in the near future? Sadio, can I start by you? Um, could, could you, sorry, I didn't quite understand. It. So the, the, there are data from uh, specific from US, USA that uh, online sales are increasing mm -hmm. for all products. But for this kind of products are decreasing 50% relative to what happens before COVID. Uh, the, the specific for this period, uh, what, what are your thoughts about it? What, are, what do you think that will happen in the near future? Is something that is temporary or something that, is, uh, that we will keep in the future? Of course, right. this is for, for business to consumer. If I see a long-term trend, you mean? Um, I am not 100% sure on this. Um, not 100% sure on this. Um, I think that we will see an increase on, of online sales for sure. Um, that's, that's, that's the trend. Um, also because many, many retailers are putting their merchandise online because you know, that part is increasing. Um, so, um, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't have a specific opinion on that. So maybe Miguel is the, the better person to ask that. There, there that was an immediate, an immediate adjustment and non-vital, non-necessary uh, items were put off. So people are suspending their acquisitions of things that are not vital. Interestingly, to, have you, to give you an idea of how things can be different in, in a between Portugal and uh, Germany as uh, regards what to wine because people are staying at home they are cooking 
uh, and the wine shops have remained open, people here are buying wines and buying better wines. This does not compensate for the wine that is not being sold elsewhere in the traditional sector segments or in particular in uh, restaurants. But there's a trade-off and people try to compensate for being at home uh, and buy those kinds of goods. As regards shoes, well, you wear shoes outside. You, if you are staying at home, you don't, in Germany, you take out your shoes. So there's not this immediate need. We want shoes is the brand of this company and people will want shoes, but that's not a priority in the weeks to come. But uh, it depends on the length of this impact. People are more concerned than in Portugal. So the, the, I mentioned to you the GFK indicator, you can check it on consumer sentiment. Here, the data that came out today, there's a spike in savings rates. People re, refrain from spending. This is an attitude that is a little bit different from ours in Portugal. And uh, so if things stabilize, uh, and they should stabilize in one or two months to come, they, people will reacquire their habits. But uh, maybe the summer collection will have a big dent in terms of sales. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, more or less the same feeling I was put you on stage, but I can share to one or two ideas. One of the things, one study that we organized globally, we expect a decrease of 22.5% of the food trade consumption. So for all channels, it's a huge drop. It's something that never happened since the Second World War. So it's a, it's a huge drop for this year. Uh, of course, online will be as impact as, uh, as, uh, as a brick and mortar store on this first uh, move because people stay at home for the first time but they can postpone all the non-essential bots so they in the first month they are not buying any shoes or leather goods online uh, but we expect that the, the 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 ones recovering first will be the online distributors because uh, in the first time people will go to the streets to work and then they came home but they avoid the shopping malls or or, or street shopping but uh, they will start to buy online because they go to outside to to work or to to put their kids in schools or to do other 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 things that are essential and when they go on they go out of their homes they need to have shoes and uh, and they start to buy shoes firstly online and then probably they resume their their, their um, shopping on on brick and mortar store so thanks miguel and thanks i do for for sharing your your ideas and your with these participants i just have one final idea for all our members that we have a program to support part of these investments not only on we want shoes it's just an example but we had a program with uh, financed by ISAP and the european funds to to support the the participation of portuguese brands in uh, online sales channels uh, so please be our guest to contact Apicaps if you if uh, you consider doing a relevant investment in these kind of things because we can help you trying to find the ways to finance the finance your investment so thanks to both of you and i uh, hope to to have you here to all participants in the near future with uh, with all other with other international players to share their opinions and their interests and to help our companies to be more well known and to sell abroad. Thank you for all your time.